I think the realistic goal is to finish in top four. The aim, the aim, the aim should be uh, winning the league. But in uh, in all honesty, and to be realistic, yeah, top four is that should be the target because uh, it's important for the club to uh, establish uh, again a continuity in that competition. And that means when you are in the top four position, you're you're close to to the objective, which is going back into the title race. So there is two elements. One, you can attract uh, the best players and retain your best players <laughs> when you play Champions League. Um, and, uh, and also, yeah, you get closer to whoever wins the title, which was uh, Liverpool and City the, the last few years. I think this uh, situation is is quite un not unique, but it's complicated because uh, because we know what uh, the situation of Barcelona in, in regard of certain players last season and a lot of clubs in in Europe have, have asked the players to uh, to uh, defer some wages. And now the, the player is uh, rightly so asking for, for his, his due. Um, that's, that's why we are in a blockage situation. So on the sporting side, it would be a, would be a very, very good signing because he, uh, he, knows, what, uh, he knows the football that Eric Ten Hag wants to, wants to play and he has, he has the attribute to, to play that, so that role. Uh, but still, one midfield shouldn't be uh, enough. I think we need to sign another one, as well as Frankie de Jong. It's just uh, you, you would love to have your your main target already at the club, but that's, you have to deal with it. That's the way it is. It's, it's disturbing, that's for sure. Can't deny it. Um, the question is uh, how the the team is dealing with it, how the staff is dealing with it. And the answer will will come uh, will come uh, soon. So it's important to keep calm and and to uh, in football you, more than any other business you need to keep the I mean use the phrase wait and see, you know. But that's it. Just sit tight and, and see what happens. Yeah, the uh, the preseason, the signing, everything is uh, looking promising and positive at the moment. Uh, if they can keep that consistency, you know, if you look back at the the second part of the season, they were with Spurs, the team who who scored. A, you know, they they managed to get a lot of points on the table. Um, so it's still a young squad, you know, a young manager. So the the, the character will be uh, tested. Consistency is still a question mark. So I would expect them to progress because uh, because of what they've they've done and the dynamic they're in. Uh, but uh, yeah, these friendly games they give you so much. Uh, they give you a tendency, but they, they don't give you certainty for the uh, entire season because it's a marathon. But so far, so good. Um, yeah, we we'll expect to, to progress. So break into the, the top four, why, why not? It's an interesting one because he spends a lot of time outside of the box uh, drifting left and right a lot of, a lot of time in the right but he ends up si uh, scoring a lot of goals in the box uh, and um, yeah I think that's what uh, Arsenal was was meeting with Bameyang uh, situation Lacazette leaving as well so it's uh, I think it's an excellent signing. His energy, 
the dynamic, obviously, with Martin nearly speaking the same language. You know, so it's it's uh, he's gonna have a big impact if he stays fit because he's someone who also doesn't uh, doesn't go away from the challenges. So sometimes you feel like he's he's on the edge. And he certainly uh, gives hundred percent all the time, but I think he can go into. I think he should score in the twenties. Twenty twenty goals should be his, his mark this season, minimum. Uh, certainly, the uh, seasons on on loan have helped him to grow, to develop. Uh, he was young when he broke into the scene and. Uh, and now he's, he's showing more and more maturity. Uh, he's got a lot of uh, game experience. So I think he's showing sign that uh, he belongs now to Arsenal and he can uh, be a, a big part of that defense with Gabriel and Ben White. Uh, so I, yeah, I anticipate him to, to play a big part this season in, uh, in Arsenal campaign. It's uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, City's lost Sterling and Jesus, signed Ireland. Um, it's gonna be again a testing season for for Pep. The the squad. Uh, I think they will be. I mean, it was a challenge this year, even though they had fifteen points gap. Uh, this season it was a, a challenge. I think this year it will be uh, it will be tighter. It will be even tighter. I think they're gonna drop more points this year than than last season. If they could potentially, uh, you know, I think uh, it was it was challenging back then. For Salex, you know, 26 years and the amount of title is won. And I think it's the same now. Uh, it's just that there is more money in the game. But in comparison, uh, Salex's uh, legacy, and I mean, Salex's uh, capacity to rebuild teams and to uh, challenge for a title all the time was his, his strengths and you know, only a few managers can can do that. I think mentally it's, it's tough. And it's all on, on Pep, the people around him to, to do that. I think they've got uh, a very good setup and, and way of working. Uh, because everybody is sharing responsibility, whether, but when Salex was in charge, it was pretty much him doing a lot of different roles at once. Uh, so, Salex's legacy is something special because he was the, the father figure, the manager, the coach, the sporting director. Uh, he, he built the uh, yeah the new academy the system you know so so many things um, he had to to deal with by, pretty much by himself he had a very good uh, team around him but he was the the main man yeah now nowadays with or oh, it's it's a bit different uh, which could help him in the long run to to stay fresh and hungry for for more.